Thanks for, uh, for this occasion to uh, share with you some of our reflections about uh, the future of city territories in this uh, dramatic uh, entering into a transition which will change, let's say, our way of living and our space. Um, we would like, as designers, to look at this process as a process that can be a catalyzer or, let's say, a, a lever for a conceptual adaptation, for a technological innovation, for a social rethinking of our way to live together. For, for this, uh, to transform the transition from just a problem into a project, we need new alliances among the different uh, disciplines and uh, social uh, scientists, uh, engineering, ecologists, uh, spatial designers. But we need uh, to use this and to make of this a public debate in order to make of this a collective uh, project. This is how we dealt with the future of the Great Geneva region, a cross-border metropolis with great landscapes, lakes, mountains, but with a strong polarization dynamics and a strong socioeconomic imbalance, where almost 75% of the jobs are on the Swiss side and the rest of the territory is a sort of dormitory, 65% of housing is on the French side of Great Geneva. In the prism of the transition, this organization has proved not to be resilient. The ongoing concentration and densification process generates new conflicts and risk to destroy soil and natural resources, to weaken the existing spatial and social capital. Um, during the pandemic, it was clear the dependency of Geneva from the rest of the region and its fragility. More than 85,000 workers commute daily and 60% of uh, these people is into the health services. But what is a metropolis today? It's not uh, like uh, London or Paris in the 19th century. The contemporary metropolis is a different entity, is a mix uh, quite fragmented of uh, different types of spaces, infrastructures, uh, cultivated land, uh, um, equipment, uh, is, uh, is something that is usually normally uh, considered as chaotic, as um, a mess, let's say. My hypothesis is that such a conflictual accumulation of materials, of natures, can be transformed in a resource, and in particular into a renewable resource under specific conditions. With this lens, we have described the Great Geneva Metropolis. Into the atlas of the transition, we have shown the importance of the long-term settlement structure, where the villages grow today more than the city, whatever uh, impositions are contained in the official planning documents. Only 50% of the Grand Geneva inhabitants live in cities and peripheries today. The other 50% live dispersed in the valleys, in the plateau, along the rivers, but very few services and public transport are provided and no jobs are there. Without commuting, you cannot live. Without a car, you are isolated. On the contrary, on the Geneva side, the dependency from the French agriculture is very high. In general, Switzerland is one of the most dependent countries in the world, together with uh, Luxembourg. However, if we can imagine a decentralized uh, form of living and working, knowing that the 50% of the Swiss population was working from uh, home during the pandemic, if uh, we can imagine an intense reconsideration of agriculture and soil issues and functionalities, then the territory of the Grand Genève can become a pilot uh, place for uh, thinking and designing the ecological and social transition. As designers and as interdisciplinary research team, we consider the potentials of the situation, the potential of the city territory in its entirety and its scattered settlement organization. Altogether, this is a renewable resource. The vision has been developed in six points, starting from soil and work. First, what if the Great Geneva soils significantly contribute to reduce CO2 emissions? What if we raise the carbon stock in the Great Geneva soils of the four per thousand or, or more? What if all soils, including urban soils, reduce flood risk and heat waves? What if Great Geneva 
would aspire to be 100% self-sustaining in food production, adapting our diet. This is possible and we can start today to produce a more resilient urban space, working at the same time on mitigation and adaptation to climate change. But what about social resilience and at the same time the reduction of carbon emission? Fourth, what if Great Geneva shifts toward a secure economy and longer product life cycles? Fifth, what if Great Geneva reinvented industrial platforms as urban places for a mix of activities? And finally, what if Great Geneva transforms the national border into a device of socioeconomic re-equilibrium? This vision proposes a few lines of thought about how urban and landscape design can help to shape a new and more substantial biopolitical action. It opens to the radical alteration of design perspective, to the value of heterogeneities and coexistences, to the need to develop alternative eco-socio-spatial prototypes. These three conditions are there to rethink the biopolitical nature of the transition and the importance of having a life in common, because this is what we have, a life in common. Soil and work are the foundation of such a vision, which reads the territory as a subject, while claiming in favour of modes of alternative space production and the radical mixing of functions, alternative forms of economy, and a radical shift towards a no-car scenario in function of, and in, say, great, uh, thanks to the public transport and active mobility that can be explored and tested uh, in a great unit. A testbed for designing the transition and providing a timeline of actions towards it, the chronology of the transition. We have a life in common. It is now clear, I think, at the end of my presentation, that climate change and the design of the transition open to a new biopolitical project. Our vision explores prototypes of coexistence and of new life power relations. And then, let's say the conclusion is, are we ready for this transition? Thanks a lot.